got another walkthrough for the NMR playlist. So we're on to number 29 now. If you want to check out the other videos, then I'll put the link to the playlist at the top of the screen now. Hope you like the video, hope you find it helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd love you to do so. But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So we've got a pretty typical question here where we've got to use all the information to establish the as possible structure for compound J in this case. So we've got the elemental analysis by mass, got the molecular ion peak from the mass spectrum, we've got the IR spectrum and the proton NMR spectrum. And I think what makes this uh, question a little bit tricky is the fact that there's no peak areas uh, in the NMR spectrum. Anyway, we'll make a start by looking at the percentage composition by mass. So um, the typical thing, percentage over the relative atomic mass, that gives us the moles. Dividing by the smallest gives us the ratio. So our empirical formula is coming out at C6H11N, and that's got an MR of 97. And then we just need to bring in the fact that the molecular ion peak is at M over Z97, which means the MR of the molecule is 97 which means that the molecular formula is also C6H11N. So we've just got to sort of tell that story in our answer. So straight away we could be thinking, well, what kind of um, organic compound is it? If it's got carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, it could be an amine, it could be a nitrile. Moving on to the infrared spectrum, I've just put that dividing line there just to show that we're going to look at this part of the spectrum. We're not really going to look in the fingerprint region. Um, so what have we got here? Well, this is pretty characteristic, this peak here. It's due to a C triple bond end. So I'm going to label that up. So our hunch that it could be an amine or a nitrile, we now know that this is a nitrile. These peaks here at about 3,000 centimetres to minus one, these are due to CH bonds. Um, all organic compounds have those, so we're not going to get any credit for that. So moving on to the proton NMR spectrum now, this is going to be the most helpful piece of information. Um, I'm going to do my usual thing, take each peak in turn. I'm going to talk about the splitting pattern. What does that mean? Obviously, there's no area information, so we can't do anything about that. But uh, we could talk about the shift as well from the position of the signals uh, in terms of their PPM. So we'll start with this peak here. So that's a quartet. We've got these four lines. Uh, it's at roughly delta 1.7 ppm. So what does a quartet mean? It means the protons that have caused that signal are adjacent to a CH3 group. And all we can say about the shift is that it's an H to C to R. I'm going to skip this tall signal at the moment. I'm going to go straight to this one. So this is a triplet. It's at roughly at delta 0.8 ppm. But the triplet tells us that it's adjacent to a CH2 group and we've got another H to C to I environment. So the fact that we've got a quartet and a triplet means that we must have an ethyl group in our molecule. So I've just color coded them to help with this little bit of explanation here. So the blue protons are adjacent to the three orange ones. So the blue signal is the quartet. The orange protons are adjacent to the blue ones there. There's two of them. So they're seen as a triplet. Now remember we don't have peak area, but what we can say now is that we've used up five hydrogens. There's 11 in the uh, molecule, so there's six left. And these must be in the same environment because we've only got one signal left. So how do you get six equivalent hydrogens? You must have two equivalent CH3 groups. So there's that written up for that signal. So it's a singlet, single line. It's roughly a delta 1.4 ppm, but the singlet means there are no adjacent hydrogens, and we've established that there's six in this environment. So we've, we're saying that they're due to two equivalent CH3 groups. And again, we've got that same H to C to R environment. So remember, we know that it's a nitrile. So we'll put that in. And we've got basically three carbons left. So there's one there, and there's your two equivalent CH3s. So that was the structure for J.